Hey, closing gloves here. I'm wearing a hat. And today we're going to be taking a look at loading up your own samples into S Layer as well as saving snapshots with S Layer. I recommend using sample maps. I'll explain that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and jump to loading up your own samples. So inside of Reactor, they use sample maps to give the ability of ensembles inside Reactor to grab samples. And what we're going to do is we're going to need to create one in order to use samples inside of S Layer. So first we need to get to the sample map editor. To do this, there are two ways. Normally there's really one, and that's you can click this guy up here and it's a waveform editor view and you can go ahead and make a sample map like that. Or you can enter edit mode by clicking this icon here and it will put you in edit mode and then you can right click on the folder icon actually on S layer and you have open sample map editor. Once you have your maps created, you can actually just uh, merge or replace them with the map that is already in S layer loaded up. A thing we need to notice about S layer is that if we open up the sample map editor and then scrolls through some things, we notice that it uses the same sample map. So if you wanna use a different sample map and save it with the ensemble, you actually have to create a local copy of the ensemble, a whole another copy of the ensemble to be able to use it with a snapshot. Let's load up your own samples. So here we've got our sample map editor and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new map. So I'm gonna select this sample inside the editor and hit control A and just delete them all. And it's gonna say remove. You're not actually deleting these samples. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit okay and it's gone and we're gonna create our own map. So right now there's a few options that are actually missing. If I click here though, a secret menu appears. It's actually if you enter edit mode, will actually show you, oh, it's the sample map option. So there's a couple extra things that you have access to when you're in edit mode. So I recommend being in edit mode. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up some samples here. So I'm gonna grab some samples and I'm just gonna take these from the browser and it popped up on my second screen, but I'm just gonna grab them. And you notice I already have a, a dot map file. So this map already exists, but I'll go ahead and create it again. And what we'll do is we'll come in here and if I if I drag up, it'll map with one sample. So I, I'm taking these 40 samples and it'll put these 40 samples, it'll drag them and put the one sample over multiple keys. And so if I were to do this and let go, that's not desirable. If I wanted to, I could just drag in closer and have it one sample per key, which is uh, what I want to happen. So what I'm gonna do is let's say you've accidentally done this, well you can uh, click, so select them all and right click on the background of here and go to set, or not set, remap to single notes. And it'll remap, remap them so that they're each on one note. And right now you see that this blue, this blue key is lined up with the sample because we've lined them up on one note. And this is the root note. If your root note is on a different note, it'll pitch your sample around. So if, you're, if your sample notes are all over the place and you want them to be lined up with wherever your note is, you can just go set root note to low note. So if you had a, a thing that was going over multiple things in your and your root note had been moved, say to here, you could right click and set it to low note and it will select the first instant, the lowest, the low end of your sample area. But if there's only, if this is the low end cause it's the, where the sample is actually at. So it will put the, the blue icon there. So it'll play back at, it'll play it back basically correctly is at the end of the day. If you want more in depth detail about like mapping samples cause you may be doing stuff with tonal samples you can go check out my contacts from the ground up. It's made by Native Instruments, so naturally they are very similar mapping editors. So you can go ahead and go into my contact from the ground up. Pretty much the same rules apply when putting things in here. There's a few, a little less features, but you pretty much can learn what you need to there if you have something that I didn't explain here. So, okay, cool. So we've got our samples loaded up and I want to take note of something. We have, I want to make these start at C3. So I want these to start at C3 and the low note or the, the the first note we have here starts on root note 60 and the top note here starts at root note 99. And so that's an important thing that I'm going to remember because when I am working with S layer, I don't want it to be selecting samples to play. And that's what these guys over here are. They're selecting samples from the sample map. You see if I'm below, if I'm selecting sample 28, well, there is no sample 28. There's sample, I have to be between 60 and 99. So these values would return it. So what I need to do in S layer is on each one of my individual scenes, cause we have eight of them, I would need to go up here and set my minimum and maximum value to be 60 to 99. And now 
it'll pull the samples. And by the way, these are now in S layer. Like S layer sees these because we loaded up that map. So now my minimum value is 60 and my maximum value is 99. So we'll always select something from here. Now these are a bunch of kicks. Then if I go ahead and play this, you can hear the kicks in action. I can randomize. Pretty cool. And we can go ahead and now use our samples and maybe take advantage of the randomization feature up here a little bit more. And as you see, it is now responding and only selecting samples. But if we carry over to another scene, like so, we will see that our range parameter has been moved back. So we'd actually have to do that. There's a, there's a convenient way of doing this, but it resets our other parameters. So you may not want to do it this way, but you can copy a scene and then paste it by clicking on another scene and just hitting paste and it now copies the range over and then you'd adjust all your other parameters so it depends on how you want to approach this now let's say you want to save your map which i'm assuming you do you can go to sample map and you can click there are two options you have export including audio data so this will keep your samples with your sample map i'm not going to do that because it will also, it will clone my audio and i don't i don't want two copies of this audio if you're going to be handing out your samples uh, as part of an ensemble or whatever, you're going to want to include your audio data. But I'm not. This is for my own use. So I'm going to export with references only. And I could, I already have one. I named it Kicks. It will save it as a .map file. And so I'm good there. Now let's say you want to save this as a snapshot. And as I told you earlier, there's some weird things that go on. So you don't want to change the original S layer. You don't want to remove their samples. I mean, maybe you do. Well, then... Okay, but I'm just going to assume you don't. So what we're going to do is I'm going to assume you're in edit mode because there are, again, menus that may not be available if you're not in edit mode. And I'm going to go to the snapshot icon. And you see even that the properties tab disappears. The, there's a several buttons down here. And these menus have also been greatly reduced. So in edit mode, all those things appear. Granted, we, we don't really care about the properties tab right now. But we're going to create a new snapshot, which is essentially a preset in reactor speak. So... If we go up to edit, you can create a new bank. A bank houses 128 snapshots. Uh, S layer actually already includes a user bank though. So look at this, we got a cool user bank. And what we can do is we can select a new, uh, new snapshot. But you see if we click, nothing happens. That's because we have to click one of these buttons down here. So we have append, which will find the next empty slot and put a our snapshot there. So if we were to hit append, it would, I mean, which we're gonna do, then it would open up and we'd be able to name it and all that stuff. We'll look at that. And then we also have store. This will overwrite one that you're already on and insert. This will put it underneath the snapshot that you have selected. So I pretty much use a pen most of the time. Store overwrite stuff. So I don't usually do this with factory content. So if I hit append, you see it opens up. But it's important to note that we're not done yet. The append button is still depressed. So we have to, we, well, you don't have to, but I'm going to name it. So I'm going to name my thing uh, kicks. Let's just say this is, I've come up with a series of interesting parameters and this is something I think that maybe is worth saving. So we're going to go ahead and name it kicks and just hit enter and you'll notice the append button or you could just click append and you see it has now been saved. So we're able to go between our snapshots. But if you were to close reactor and call it good, you would actually not have this back. You actually have to create a local ensemble. That way you can house it. So I personally think this is a much slower way of doing things. I think it's faster, unless you unless you have specific parameters that you want with S layer. Um, I, I haven't really come up with one that I think is like something that I want to save. I, I just go through factory stuff or just create my stuff on the fly. I usually come in here to create sample packs and I'm in here for the randomization. So yeah, and they have a lot of really good default starting stuff too, like basics and they have a whole bunch of really awesome beginning points. So I haven't really found a need to add any, but if you want to, you can add them there and we even associate your sample map with it. And you have to create a local copy. So to do that while in edit mode, cause it's not there if you don't have it open, you click this little save icon and it will save it and you can save S layer. And you see, I already actually have this example because the first time I recorded this tutorial, I forgot to record the output of my computer and that made me redo it. So you would save it. And then if I went to, so it's already there, but I'm going to assume you saved it. And in this case, you'd make like a whole bunch, right? And you'll get some sort of saving message that'll pop up and just hit okay. And so what you've done is you've created basically a duplicate of S layer. Now, if we close this, let's say that you want to open up that, that S layer. Well, if you go to where you saved it, and in my case, I, I saved it in here and I went to processed, I would have to open up this S version of S layer. And if I do, if I double click it. Okay, so in this version of S layer, if I go into 
my snapshots and go here. Here it is. Here's kicks. But if I were to go into, and no, I don't want to, but if I go into the version, you generally don't want to open up standalone wire stuff. Why you have a VST version open anyways. But if we come into users, S layer, and then open up S layer in the, where it is the original S layer, it's going to have some, I didn't show you was that our sample map was there and theirs wasn't. So that's another thing, but you see, it's got their sample map back, which is a really good thing. Cause we didn't want to change that. And we have the ability to, uh, if we go to our snapshots here, we will notice that in the user snapshot bank, ours is gone. So yeah, it's sort of an annoying thing the way they've done this. I'm not sure if reactor six is any different. I own reactor five. So that's what I know. Uh, so yeah, I really feel that using the maps and replacing emerging maps is faster. So if you're in edit mode, you can simply right click here and replace it. But I'm maybe used to just hitting this because if you're working with reactor ensembles, they may not always have a simple little button right there. This isn't really that simple because you have to have a certain feature on for it to work anyways. But you click it and you can go into, and remember there's a secret menu there, which I find sort of hilarious. You go into, oh, I'm going to replace this one with my kicks one, bam, it's already done. And I can go ahead and do the adjustments I want. But that's how you get your own samples into S-Layer and begin to finagle with them and have fun. So you can make your own sample maps real easy, just save them up and then just get used to swapping them out. If you have any questions, let me know, subscribe, support me on Patreon and have a blessed day.